I'm at a gypsy. You haven't had a chance to ride the stock yet, have you? The what? The stock vog. Oh, no, actually, I did not get a chance to go there. I was busy doing a test, and, yeah, JT ended up going for us, so I didn't get the chance to ride it, no. What was what was his feedback on that thing? I didn't watch that video. So, JT thought, you know, that, you know, he, he, he actually said, like, look, I wasn't expecting much, and I think that's a lot of people when they go to electric technology. They're not expecting a whole lot, and he wrote it, and he's like, Holy shit, man, I had a great time. Like, it's a ton of power. That's all he kept saying. He's like, I can't believe how much power there is there. Yeah. You know, so uh, overall, his his thoughts were like, they were all positive. And he had a great time. And, it, and he said that I didn't have to adjust my riding style or what I already knew to the Varg. Like, I can just adapt that to it. And with me being with Alta for so long, you know, doing all that, that development back then, uh, I believe in electric technology, man. I have a great time. I still got an Alta at home. Me and my kid ride the shit out of it. It's awesome. Oh, I, I didn't know that you were involved in that at all. Yeah, so Alta reached out to me when uh, they first started the project. And I used to fly up back and forth to San Francisco and, and test for them. And I was really early in the infancy stage of the bike. So it was kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, didn't know a lot about electric technology learned a lot from the guys but riding the bike early uh, when it was getting developed was quite scary because it would just shut off a lot a lot of mm. error codes and things and um i remember just <laughs> telling my wife when i'd go fly up like all right there's life insurance i hope to see you in about three days because i don't know what the fuck's gonna happen and uh <laughs> but what was what was cool about the alta guys every time i went up there and we had a problem they fix that problem. And although another a problem, another problem arose, uh, they would always fix it. And then we whittled it down to where the bike would never have any issues. Yeah. Um, and dude, it was a blast to ride. Like it was a blast to learn a lot about the electronic um, technology that's coming out. And for me, like some of the most fun times that I can remember is trail riding on these electric bikes with like three to five dudes and just talking shit while we're riding and saying, no, oh, you suck. You missed that corner. You did. And it just, it doesn't feel like you're on a dirt bike, but you got a throttle. You're hauling ass. You're, you're roosting. You, you, I mean, so it's, it's a great time. It's just going to take a long time. And we talked about the, the four stroke haters. There's even more of those in the E world. Right. So, mm. um, our, our sport, I don't know, is quite ready for, electric technology and and for me as well i think electric technology isn't quite ready for us because let's face it like heat and duration is the nemesis of electronic technology mm. uh, that was one of the big problems when i was doing stuff with alta is like yeah it's supposed to be 30 minutes and we have a full battery for 30 minutes but it would last 12 minutes because of heat the mm. dirt, you know, heavy dirt, uh, acceleration, it would just cause the bike to lose power. So, um, once they get that down and they can, people can actually ride it for a long duration period on a motocross track. I think it's really going to take off because, um, you can adopt all of your riding, you know, technique and style, just like you can on a, on a combustion engine to electronic power. So it's, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah, that's cool to hear that you were part of that the Alta process. I I didn't know that 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 was the case. Um, and yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. There's there's a lot of people that just like aren't ready for it to be a thing. But from from my experience, like going there, I was I wasn't only able to adapt my riding. I was way better. Like it was easily like hands down the best I'd yeah. ever rode a bike. I just feel like taking a lot of the variables away. Like exactly what you said about the crank mass. Like I feel like after riding that bike, it really changed a lot of, I think it was probably like a good testing thing, you know, cause it's like, you have to go to extremes to understand something like kind of like when I went to road racing to then go back to the track, I could feel different things because it was just so completely like it was polar opposites, you know? And I think that I, that's what I took away from like the electric experience was, um, I think so much of being a good rider is it just this predict predictions. 
Like you're essentially just yeah. making predictions uh, of what the motorcycle is going to do. And it's like real time, but it's not really real time. It's a, you're ahead of yourself a little bit, whether it's a section, whether it's a straightaway, whether it's whatever. But, but in the moment, you're making decisions of how to use the clutch, how to use the throttle, how to use the brake, all based off what you think the bike is about to do. And I think that mm-hmm. as soon as you've got a motor in between your legs and you've got this rotating mass, uh, you've got all of these things to account for, like gearing, um, clutch slippage. Like there's so many variables that then you need to take into account to like factor into the predictions that you're making. Um, and I think that that was the big thing that I took out of the the experience with the electric bike is that you just took so many variables out of the equation which then made the predictions so much easier for my dumb brain to make (laughs) and it actually made me uh ride better and it made me realize a bunch of things that i actually do wrong uh on a dirt bike and i think the clutch was the biggest one like i overused the clutch in a massive way um on a on a dirt bike and on like a you know a bike with a motor so there was just so many variables yep. that when taken away i could really realize how they actually impacted my riding and i think that for the again to talk about because i just put myself in the average category of riding you know to for the average guy like i was excited when i left there i and i i was thought all right i'm getting two of these so my dad can ride motocross again Cause like my dad can't ride a fucking motocross mm-hmm. bike. He's 60 years old, you know, like I'm not putting him out <laughs> right. there on my 55 horsepower 350. So it's like, you can dial this thing <laughs> yeah. back and then you just take so much yep. shit out of the equation for him. And like, I could actually ride with my dad again. So yeah, I think that while there's a lot of people that are haters, I think that there's a lot of people that once they experience it, especially if they're in the average rider category, like I'd put myself in, they're going to be like, oh, this just really makes this a more predictable, enjoyable, safe experience. And I think that predictability equals safety on dirt bikes. Let me ask you these questions. So this is always asked people that start riding you know, electric technology. How many times was your finger out on the clutch when it wasn't there? I had the rear brake on the... Okay. Yeah. So but, when I first started riding the Alta, I was like always trying to put my finger out. I was doing that. And then how about the sounds that you hear that you normally do not hear when yeah. you're on your four yeah. show? Like you're like, what in the hell is that? Like, what is that? You know, that, that was crazy for me for a long time. Like, especially when you go on a fresh track and all the mud hitting the fenders and these things that you normally don't hear the tire skidding and the, and the flex of the tire. And I'm like, wow, this is insane to me. Um, but you're right about the technique part of it for me, same thing. I, it's hard for me to ride on the balls, um, on the balls of my feet when I ride, like I'm always trying to do, you know, do the rhino thing, unlock the hips, get on the, on the balls of your feet. And when you have a lot of noise, it's hard to concentrate to do that. But for me, for whatever reason, when I'm on an electric bike, I can find the balls of my feet better. I'm calmer. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have more concentration uh so there's a lot of these things that i normally don't get riding a a normal four-stroke machine than i do when i when i ride the alta around the house and and for me man it's it's just like what we were talking about earlier as well it's just more options for everyone right like Mm. let's get people involved in the two wheels man that's what i'm about like i want people to ride off-road however it is if you're on a two-stroke you're on a four-stroke if you have you want to do some urban riding and Aiden and I do urban riding around the Des, you know, we'll go down the street, head to the trails and like, it, it's quiet stealth. Like it's yeah. badass. Like there's still a place for that. Um, will it ever replace the feeling of pouring gas into my bike and riding? Probably not, but I still like it. It's still fun. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm with you. The thing that I was doing, so I was doing the, the, the finger brake, like the handbrake. And I yeah. loved it, dude. I just, that to me is the move. And I would do that right now on my 350 <laughs> if I could. 
and yeah it was just that that same thing with you know you can be in the perfect technique you don't have to change gears which means that you just sort of set and forget is how i'd describe it just get your feet in the right place you don't have to use a rear brake and you don't have to change gears so it's set and forget apart from a few little weight changes yeah. here and there of like pushing down you know towards your axle on the outside peg and you know little things set and forget just leave it there braking you're in the same position like even I know this is a technique that a lot of the um, I know a lot of the world championship guys do it I don't know how many of the AMA guys do it for motocross but a lot of guys are like really dropping their heels back on braking just to for extra weight um, so I mean that became a no brainer because then you, you didn't even have to compensate by having like one heel down one foot on the on the uh, rear brake so yeah it just took like I guess I've just made it idiot proof, you know, and for an idiot like me, it, it seemed like it seemed like the move. <laughs> it is fun to ride. Like, like what you said. And, and after I rode it, you know, went up there a, a couple months and rode around. And then when they released the machine, um, they came down to Southern California and we got to test in, in the public. And I thought I was going to get a bashing from a lot of these guys locally, but man, a lot of people were open-minded, which was nice to see. And, but, it is quite funny and scary at the same time when you're on these local tracks with four strokes and two strokes and they can't hear you coming dude and you try to yeah. pass them it freaks them out because they're like holy shit like they didn't know someone was there and so if we do get to that point when these bikes are coexisting with other bikes there's got to be some kind of way to for safety to to let other riders know that these bikes are out there because you won't be able to hear them man and mm. you, if you want to change lines or do something you won't even know that some bitch is behind you unless he you know he's yelling at you so i was always you know riding behind someone i go yep yep and just kind of yell a little bit just so they yeah. knew i was behind him you know so if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang